come join me and some of your favorite moto vloggers Monday, April 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern for a live stream. And remember about some really exciting news I had a couple weeks ago about working with a fashion designer slash rider making women's motorcycle jackets? That debuts April 15th. So be sure to check the link below. Hey guys, it's Doodle. I'm gonna go over my pre-ride safety checklist and I'm gonna use my Triumph Owner's Handbook to guide me through it. So my bike is already on the rear stand, making it straight up, so I'm gonna need that for some of the things that I, that I check up. All right, let's get started. So one of the things I'm gonna check is the sand. Make sure that it springs back and forth just fine. One ride I did, I dropped my bike. It bent the kickstand. I didn't realize that until I was on the ride and I couldn't shift gears because my kickstand was bent and blocking my gear. So it was a really easy fix. I pulled over on the side of the road and another rider bent it back for me and it was fine, but that could have been pretty bad. Another thing I want to check is my coolant levels. Make sure that they're in between the minimum and maximum lines. Your engine needs to be cold and it also needs to be upright. So if I look right here, there's my maximum and minimum lines. It looks like I'm pretty good, but near minimum. So I'll need to watch out for that on my coming rides. So I wanna just check my brake pads and check your manual, cause this may be different for every bike, but on my bike, it's 1.5 millimeter of friction material for the front pads and 4.5 millimeters of friction material on the rear pads. So let's look at that. So here on the rear pads, I can see the thickness pretty well. It looks like it's pretty good. Let's check on the front. And my front, I have two disc brakes like every bike should. So I'm gonna make sure to check both of them. Right about there, I can see the line indicating how thick that pad is. So I also want to check my front forks, just make sure I don't see any oil leaking right along here on both sides. And it looks pretty clean. I want to check my brake fluid levels and also make sure that the brake fluid itself is healthy. So you can see it on the front of my bike. This is where it usually is. So it's in between the upper and lower line, so that's good. And it's starting to get a little orange compared to how it was when I first got it, but still pretty good. If it gets to the color of like Coca-Cola, that's too dark and you wanna change it. So my rear fluid levels are going to be on the right side of my bike. And those are pretty high. That's actually higher, that's interesting but it's at my upper levels and it's not too dark, but maybe soon that it comes to time to change it. And of course, I wanna check my tire condition and pressure. The recommended tire pressure for my manual says 32 in the front and 42 in the rear. Every bike is different and also every rider is different. You may have a different preference. For now, I just choose to do what my manual tells me. So depending on your tires, this little line right here is a gauge for me. And once this goes all the way down deep to that, my tires are too low. So I've got some room. Don't need to change my tires anytime soon, so that's good. One really cool thing about the Triumph Street Triple R is the tire gauge comes out at an angle, which makes it for very comfortable pressure measuring. So here's my tire gauge. I should be at 32 in the front and 42 in the rear. Perfect. Now let's try the back. 41. Close enough. I also wanna check my chain, make sure that it's lubricated. My manual says about every 500 miles. Some people will just do it whenever the chain looks dirty. Yeah. 
So it's been a couple hundred miles since I last clean, clean and lube my chain. But it's not looking too bad. And as far as adjustment goes, that's something that I have not learned yet. So I'm not going to cover that in this video today. Now we're going to go around and check my oil levels. So in order to get an accurate reading, my manual says to start the engine and run it at idle for five minutes, then stop the engine and wait about three minutes for the oil to settle and then do the measurement. So I've already done that, so let's go around and take a look. Okay, so here's my dipstick on the right side of my bike. I'm gonna take it all the way out and wipe it with a cloth. Now I'm gonna screw it all the way back in Take it out. And it's gotta be in between the minimum and maximum lines. Looks like I'm good. So for this next part, I'm going to get on my bike and check everything I need to check there. So I'm gonna take it off the rear stand. If you need to see how I put my bike on and off a rear stand, you can see that in another video, which I'll link in the description below. So, I want to make sure I have enough fuel. I'm almost full, so that's good. Now I want to check my clutch lever and make sure I have enough free play in it. What free play means... What? What happened there? Who did that? So what free play means is that there's just a little bit of jiggle in your clutch cable. And over time, this your clutch slowly expands Thank you, Kaylor Maid, for the lesson. Over time, your clutch slowly expands and this jiggle goes away. For me, it happened in about, I don't know, six months of doing a lot of slow speed skills practice. So you need to readjust it every now and then to make sure you have that back. Otherwise, while you're riding your clutch, it'll be the equivalent of being constantly pushed in. Learn that the hard way. Of course, I wanna check my brakes too. Make sure I have normal pressure. Now, I also wanna make sure that I have a little free play in my throttle. So let's try that with my bike on. See, a little bit of jiggle, but no room. Perfect. One thing your manual recommends is to use a kill switch only in emergencies. Turn off your bike always with the key. This will help your electrical equipment last a lot longer. Of course, I wanna check my steering. Make sure everything moves left to right accurately. All the way to the right. All the way to the left. And lastly, just want to check around that all the nuts, bolts, fasteners, every little thing that needs to be secured is secured. All these little bolts that can come undone. Make sure my seat is down, nice and tucked. So just go over the whole bike and double check that. Okay, so that's everything that I want to check up on my bike before a ride. That is very extensive. If you're in a rush, at the very least, check your brake fluid levels, make sure you have enough fuel, and check your tire pressures. Everything else will make you an A student. Thanks for watching, hope that helps. Bye.